Okay, this is a 24 to 12 volt step down book converter. These are mainly, these are really made for automotive use. The step down from 24 to 12 volts. Now, this has two inputs and two outputs. One of the outputs at 12 volts is 0.5 amps, and one of the outputs at 12 volts is 30 amps. It's a lot of amperage. Now, when you get these, they don't come like this. You just basically get this box and three wires coming out, and I think it's three wires going in as well. So the thicker wire is the 30 amp, obviously, that's positive. Thinner wire, 0.5 amp, that's half an amp. Now, if you want to I fitted this 25 millimeter fan inside. And that is actually soldered to the 12 volt side inside. I fitted these heat sinks. I think these are off MOSFETs because of a chip in here. I'll show you that just now chip in here two main sort of integrated circuit chips I fitted this heat sink off a Pentium 4 and there was a fan on here and it was still getting warm so I've, I've stopped using this now and I'm going to uh, yeah, I'm going to be using just a 12 volt power supply well why do I need 24 volt to 20 12 volt 24 <laughs> sorry 24 to 12 volt why do I need it because I did have it well I still do have a 24 volt power supply unit for my heat bed and I was stepping that down to use the ramps now also originally these as I say they didn't have the holes in the side I drilled these holes in the side to let the air out from this fan that I also fitted Originally these had lugs on, but I broke those off so that I could fit it to this Pentium 4 heatsink which as I say had a fan on. Because these get hot. Now in automotive use you can bolt them to a chassis and the air of movement of the car or van or lorry whatever you're using I imagine they're going to keep a lot cooler I don't know because I've never tried it for this in my case I've had it pretty much in a well in a cardboard box actually right I can begin that off so here is the bottom okay and basically all I did is well I these had two lugs on. I drilled four holes in here and drilled them into this aluminium plate. But this is quite thin metal this. So there's not a lot of heat transfer because this is an aluminium case. And not, I don't think there's a lot of heat transfer from this these edges in a way into this. So that's not the best heat sink I don't think. Even if it wasn't a car or van, I can't quote what that would be like. But I found it, it worked. I mean, it's been working fine, no problems with it to speak of. But the heat gets hot, and I don't mean hot, I don't mean just warm, it gets hot. Too hot to touch, so it's 60 70 degrees probably. So I'm going to open it up because somebody did ask what chips were inside, and now I've got my 12 volt power supply unit. I don't really need this anymore, so give you an initial look. There's one integrated circuit. This is the one that gets really hot, this one. Because even with the fans on, these heat sinks on, etc., I could feel this and it was get, still getting hot. 
and the extra funds in the box that I was using. Okay, I'll take this out of here and basically I have to I have to take off the uh, chips. Now these are screwed to this aluminium case which acts as a heat sink but in my opinion it's very poor at doing that or it's just too much heat from this device. Well for me it was. So I think these are what I put on the outside here, what I put on these didn't come with it, are MOSFET heat sinks, something like that. Don't quote me on that. Or high powered MOSFETs. So as I say, I fitted this 25mm fan, which way does that go? This way I think. So let me move this light a little bit. Okay. And that basically, just I just sold it onto the 12 foot bolt output. there on a 0.5 amp as I said there's a 0.5 amp and a 30 amp or a clean 30 amp I've never tried it to that I'm gonna say it isn't so let me show you the case first now as I say you don't get the holes in I'll put those drill those in to give it some air ventilation and doesn't come with the fan which I fitted. So let's have a look at the top of this. Move those wires off a little bit. Oh, I fitted this extra capacitor to try and smooth out because what I did find is I had some LEDs on the 0.5 side and it did flicker because I had a ramps for 3D printer 12 volts which has PWM and when it the PWM signal came on the LEDs although on the 0.5 amp and the ramps was on 30 amp side I still get some flicker it was almost as if it was transferring a flicker across whether this helped or not not really anyway let's have a look I think it basically supposed to go this way well I mean for reading the lighting on it
some meat tea. So I'm in Dukta. Tie it over there with two main integrated circuits and a few capacitors. Resistor. So it's marked on the board. Now, the person was asking for the numbers of the chip. Can't remember which one they wanted. As I said, there's two chips here. This side one can be very hot. So, let me Look at that. So this is a three pin one, this one on the side, and this one, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, I think, five pin on this one. So I'm going to have a look at these chips and see if I can get the numbers off. ground off that is. Right, I'm sure you get back again. So as I say, those two wires are soldered on going to a small fan to, for me to help keep it cool. Not, I can't remember what chip you said, have a look at. There's a three pin one, okay, you've got it, but this one, no. Again, touch with you, and if you want this, I'll send this to you as is, basically, probably. Well, I might put this part back in the case. Okay.